Well, welcome back in. Um, this is actually part three of the binding. However, you're going to notice as I'm inserting the page um, blind bound piece into the cover that the pages are done. Um, I don't let you see a lot of it right now because we're going to actually come back to that. So this one was kind of hard to film and put together in order because I did other pieces first but it just didn't make sense in in the way that I uh, did it so I actually in reality I created the outside binding I created the inside pages then I started um, to gesso brayered some gesso onto the original pages from 13 days adrift which you saw in the last video part two from there I then went in and I did all the internal page art and then came back and inserted it I wanted you to be able to see most of the binding getting completed and then we'll go into the details of the inside pages um, because it just doesn't flow very well to watch so that was my thinking behind doing it this way um, so I did um, stop this video um, just starting to do some final touches on the inside of the covers I didn't show all of it because I will show that after we um, I do the pages on the inside insert uh, on the page insert if that makes did I totally lose you if I totally lost you on that whole sentence please comment below because <laughs> it's a little confusing and I'm hoping when you watch it uh, as we go through it'll start to make a little bit that will make more sense but I did want to clarify that so I've got this vintage um, bias tape and I'm using that to cover the edges on the the outside cover and of course my handy um, clothes pins are helping me hold all that down and I am I'm not using book binding glue I am using my Fabri-Tac and I just find I like the fact that it doesn't seep through the fabric and it's very flexible and I really needed that because my cover is fabric the outside of the cover is fabric so I just wanted needed something that would work moving from that fabric outside to the paper on the inside. I'm just going back through and any places that I missed with the Fabri-Tac glue, I'm just um, fixate, fixing those around that um, binding that I added. Now I'm about ready to do something I've never done before and never tried and I have to say I was pretty impressed with it but I only think it worked because I used either uh, tissue paper, deli paper or um, 
rice paper for this. So I am using matte medium gel and I'm collaging down some of the leftover scraps. Now remember, I've already done the inside pages even though you haven't seen that yet. So what I'm using is the leftover scraps from that and only selecting those that are those lightweight um, tissues. And I'm using the matte gel medium on them which might be overkill for and usually is overkill for tissues, um, rice paper, deli paper, that kind of thing. But I really felt like I wanted it to adhere really well um, at that transition from the paper to the fabric. So I have to say, as an artist, that really, that little section of this journal really was motivating for me. Um, it kind of, and that's how this journal has been the whole way through, and I think it's because it's taken on, I just went really slow with it, and it's taken on so many different directions at key points, so this was... Um, used as a collaboration. I mean, I did a collaboration with Stencil Girl Stencils and Tina Walker, and it appeared in on their blog, Stencil Girl's blog, and you can see the link down below to see that original um, blog post. And that's why I started this. Um, and then I submitted it to Strawberry Moon Magazine, and by that time I had finished um, kind of I had gone back in and I thought I was finished um, when I did it with Stencil Girl and then I came back to it after um, it was initially approved for um, Strawberry Moon and I actually went in and made some changes to the pages um, and then it got photographed for Strawberry Moon magazine and as you know what it was in the fourth issue um, issue four at the end of this year or the end of um, oh, 2022 I'm like what year are we in what year are we going into <laughs> so confused sorry folks so anyways um, so then it after that um, photo shoot I was like oh my gosh it took, you know, 13 days and then I could see it correlate to my own life. And so it then took another change before it went into the gallery. So this, the finished journal, um, which you'll eventually see if you follow this whole series along, um, is currently in the um, SAG gallery um, over in uh, La Encantada Mall in um, Tucson, Arizona. And um, so it's up for sale there. But it really took some changes and I really enjoyed it. It just, it propelled me. I mean, I started this in April of 2022. And I, the it was completely finished, final finished piece in November of, I think it was November. Yeah, November of 2022. Let me double check that here because now I'm questioning myself. Um, yeah, November. I finished it in November. So, and then it went uh, to the gallery. So, anyways, that's a little bit of backstory to this little baby. So, we are going to stop here on the binding portion. And now we're going to get into the inside pages and how I handled those. So, you're going to notice that those inside pages are not attached to the cover and that's because I did that before I attached them to the cover even though I'm not showing you um, it in that order. So hope you hang in there for this series. I think this is just an, a really incredible uh, journal and um, it was so much fun to work with.